Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Well, this is absolutely no surprise whatsoever. I've just been counting the days since Obama's big 60th birthday bash, waiting for the inevitable confirmation that it was in fact a super spreader event. It turns out that the New York Times reporter that claimed that the party was low risk because people were sophisticated, it turns out being sophisticated doesn't make you immune to the COOF pandemic now, does it? Democrats are looking like absolute buffoons on this one. You want to know why? Because what we're seeing is not just a super spreader event, specifically isolated to those who attended Obama's birthday bash, but we are now seeing the highest cases of the coof on the entire island of Martha's Vineyard. As Democrats have been pushing rhetoric that your children may be committing homicide if they go to school without a mask and their teacher gets the coof, as Democrats have been politicizing everything, pushing this politically charged rhetoric that Republicans don't care about other people's lives and are endangering others because they refuse to take responsibility. They care too much about their freedoms. They're a bunch of schmucks, as Arnold Schwarzenegger said. It turns out the only ones that are endangering others and causing major super spreader events are in fact the Obamas, who hold themselves to a different standard than everybody else, which is, of course, no standard at all. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean, but before we get into any of it, please make sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe, share the video as much as possible. We're still shadow banned by the YouTube algorithm, hidden from non-subscribed viewers. And with that out of the way, let's roll the tape. All right, guys, so apparently not so much sophisticated as much as super spreader. We've got this exclusive piece from the Daily Mail. At least 74 people on Martha's Vineyard have tested positive for the COOF-19 since Barack Obama's maskless 60th birthday bash, the most cases on the island since April. Health officials note it's still too early to know whether the hundreds of guests and workers at the maskless party have contributed to the surge in cases. It's still too early to note that literally hundreds of people surged the island, partied for hours without masks without a care in the world, attending restaurants, being all over the place, probably drunk and high, belligerent, a bunch of Hollywood celebrities and TikTok stars partying like it's going out of fashion. But of course, it's too early to note that there is clearly a direct correlation between a COOF-19 surge on the island right after Barack Obama's big birthday bash. Yeah, I'm gonna have to not give the Obamas the benefit of the doubt on this one. This is on them. It's just a continued slap in the face. Take a look at this picture right over here. The Obamas attending restaurants the night after, they had a massive bash with nearly 700 people in attendance, indoors, no masks, and then without a care in the world. They're all showing up to restaurants the day after, no social distancing, essentially acting exactly how people are acting in Florida and Texas. The only difference is they're complete hypocrites. They're the exact people who tell you that you cannot live your life. Even though you're being more responsible than they are, you're not inviting 600 people over to your lavish mansion, partying in a tent all night. You're being being relatively moderate, reasonable, you just don't want your freedoms infringed upon. But you're the bad guy, and Obama and the Democrats are the heroes of the COOF pandemic. Give me a break. The horrible double standard in the cover-up. Erica Badu apologizes to Obama's for Martha's Vineyard party foul, being a quote, terrible guest. Erica Badu's unauthorized social media posts showed the Obamas dancing mask-free among the hundreds of attendees. So taking pictures and not hiding the truth, hiding the fact that the Obamas are clearly in violation of the exact restrictions that they promote imposing on you guys, that makes her a terrible guest. Now, you know what? If you didn't show the truth, and if you appealed to the Obama's will to hide everything, to cloak themselves from public scrutiny because they knew that they were doing something wrong, then you would be a terrible guest, and not only a terrible guest, but a terrible person. You showing the American people exactly what was going on here, the horrific double standard, the rules for thee, but not for me. Of course, the mantra that the Obamas and the Democrat establishment and Democrat elite live their lives by, that actually makes you a good Good guest. It also makes you a good person. You did the right thing, whether it was intentional or not. One thing I know for sure that was definitely intentional is the consistent Democrat attempt to shield themselves from scrutiny and to hide the fact that they are openly violating the exact COOF measures that they impose. This is what is so incredibly infuriating. They continue with this rhetoric that we're all in this together. We all have to make sacrifices. But what they truly mean is that you have to make sacrifices while they remain unaffected. Hollywood celebrities during the early days of the COOF pandemic, trying to relate with the little people that they were also stuck in quarantine, living in their lavish, massive mansions with 10 bedrooms and 15 bathrooms, a bowling alley, a bar, probably having family over, living with guests, a maid, a butler, a private chef, taking their private jet on
on vacation to the Caribbeans, but they feel you folks. They're going through the same thing. They're so depressed in their massive Hollywood homes. The restrictions were for you. Your job being furloughed, you losing your job and not being able to pay your bills. That was just for you. Everybody else was banking out. In fact, it continues to happen. During the Biden inflation crisis, your money is worth less. Your salary is now worth less. But of course, the Democrats and politicians aren't impacted in the same way at all. And the worst part is they're not going to be infected by inflation and they're going to do it with your money. Pelosi raises salary cap for house staffers to 199000 as Biden inflation hurts American families. You might have lost your job and missed a whole lot of paychecks. Nancy Pelosi, the Obamas, the rest of them didn't miss a single paycheck. They caused production shortages and inflation across the board. Gas is up over 50% over the last 12 months. They did this to you. You missed paychecks and now your paychecks are worth less, but they haven't missed a single one and now their paychecks are worth more on your taxpayer dime. Just to add insult to injury and to add even more insult to injury, it's somehow always Republicans fault. The only reason we're here is because Republicans refuse to act. Donald Trump is the reason why you guys still have coup restrictions. If you would have just listened to us in the first place, we wouldn't be here despite the fact the entire world seems to be following the exact same trend regardless of what they do. But of course, no, it's Republicans fault. If Republicans would just shut up and listen to everything Dr. Fauci said, then we wouldn't be in this mess in the first place. Thinking you're stupid and you can't see the double standard. Barack Obama party bash, good. Sturgis motorcycle rally, real bad. A bunch of elite, drunk, coked up celebrities and politicians in a tent, all piled on top of each other like a bunch of raccoons. That's good because it's a sophisticated crowd. Those darn Trump supporters and their motorcycles. Therefore, they're not sophisticated. So we have a different set of rules for them. Despite the fact that we went through this exact same thing last year, how the Sturgis motorcycle rally may have spread the coof across the upper Midwest. The spread of the coof pandemic was the fault of Sturgis rally goers. Violent left-wing protests across the country, of course, had nothing to do with it. Turns out the facts were not exactly on their side. Turns out a bunch of people outside riding their motorcycles in the fresh air, naturally socially distanced, leaving space for other motorcycles and other vehicles, wasn't exactly the super spreader event that Democrats were pretending it was. The Sturgis biker rally did not cause 266,000 cases of the COVID-19. In fact, Minnesota public health officials have traced 51 cases among state residents directly to the rally, along with 35 related cases stemming from attendees to friends, co-workers, and household members, for a total of 86 linked cases. Millions of people attend the Sturgis rally, and we're talking about 86 cases in the state of Minnesota. But Sturgis motorcycle rally, bad. BLM protests, good. Obama birthday bash, with hundreds of people stacked inside a tent, good. Starting to see the double standard? I'm sure you've seen it from the start. These people are a bunch of hacks, folks. Everything's political. And of course, I pretty much guarantee you, all of the major left-wing media outlets will not even say a peep, will not report at all on Obama's birthday bash event, which is turning out to be a real super spreader event, because of course they're not going to call out their own boss now, are they? The corrupt democratic media strikes again. That's a video that I got for you guys though. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe, share it as much as possible. I got to get back to work though. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Is President Obama setting the wrong example about how serious COVID-19 is by hosting a big birthday party with hundreds of people this week? This event, according to all the public reporting, is outdoors and in a moderate zone. Was there concern that this President Obama birthday party might become a super spreader event? Well, I think, Peter, the guidance is about what steps people can take uh, when they're in public settings. Indoor settings specifically was the new guidance to keep themselves and others safe. That was White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki defending President Obama's upcoming birthday party. Okay, this isn't even just a gathering of 100 people. The, the reports are that it is a 500-person guest list with 200 additional people needed to work the event. The Martha's Vineyard bash has drawn controversy amid the rising cases. By the way, it's close to Provincetown, Massachusetts, where that out, the breakthrough cases were that led the CDC to reimpose uh, the mask guidance and restrictions. Saki says President Biden will not attend. Nancy, what do you make, what do you make of this? By the way, if you think in the summer you're having a party for that many fancy people and not having a tent, well, then you're crazy. It's going to be, it's got to be tinted. Again, there are going to be choppers flying over, messing up the lady's hair, you know. Oh, 
the, the cutlery is flying everywhere. You know it's going to be under a tent. Well, I'll just say Gavin Newsom, French Laundry. Uh, that's that's my response. Um, look, I, I think it's wonderful that the president is having a celebration. And is it wrong that I would like to go? But the fact is, it's the hypocrisy once again. Just answer the question, Jen. Just say, yes, there is risk or, you know, cite the, the precautions that are being taken. But uh, the, the non-answers and the, the let them eat cake mentality of of many on this issue is is what bothers people. I mean, we've been talking about it all morning, um, but happy birthday, President Obama. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Rebecca, on this note, the uh, New York Post, by the way, the New York Post put it on its cover today. It's my party and I'll defy if I want to, if you can <laughs> see it. Got to love the the New York Post would. I They quote an individual in here saying, his birthday party is insane, says a caterer. His bash is a nightmare to pull off this time of year on this tiny island, especially due to the lack of labor because of COVID. What is he thinking? Isn't somebody in the president and first ladies, the former president's orbit to say, hey, 500 people is too many. This looks bad and might be bad like super spreader. Well, it sounds like a logistical nightmare, but I will say maybe President Obama is the one who's leading the way out of this pandemic. Hey, let's do what he does. Let's get outside. Let's have big parties. Let's keep masks off of children. I'm the mother of five young children. I want them out running around um, this summer in the fall doing their sports and activities without masks. And so if he's going to be doing it and he has access to all the data like we do, we can see all the reports, yes. then let's follow his example and get outside and have big parties. So on that note, is President Obama saying that Joe Biden's uh, administration, the CDC and the guidance, that they don't know what they're doing, that they're wrong, that he's like, go ahead and live your it's life and have a 500 person party. Let's get down. Right. Maybe he's saying I mean, you're really you're you're really down to two options here. Either you see all of the data and you think it's a risk and you're gonna do it anyway, which I don't think is what's going on, or you see all the data that we see, you see the reports and you say, okay, vaccinated people, mm -hmm. we're outside, let's move forward, let's not live in fear. That's, that's me. I had COVID, I'm vaxxed up too. I got the antibodies and the immunization antibodies. And if somebody tells me to put on a mask in their establishment, private business, I will. But other than that, um, you can stick my mask where the sun doesn't shine. Coming